So th there are communities out there that um, have access to shell. And uh, this shell is produced uh, by folks like AC Inc. down east, by Looks Canning Company, where they're producing clams for um, uh, resale for the fried clam market, or they're canning them. And so what do you do with the shell? So the idea is, is that maybe these shells could be used to enhance soft shell clam recruitment. Okay? So this is a study that was done over the course of 2014, 2015, and 2016 at various sites in the Harrisican. So we're going to be talking about pH. And the first thing that we need to understand is that for the water that we drink, the pH is around 7, which is, quote, neutral. But in marine, the marine environment, the pH of 8 is considered to be essentially neutral. Okay, so anything that's less than 8 is acidic if it's in marine systems. All right? Okay, so what is pH? Well, probably most of you, like myself, didn't realize that pH is actually an acronym for the Latin potentia hydrogenii. How's that, Katie? Pretty good? Yeah. And that um, all this is is it's measuring hydrogen ions and their activity. So pH is a measure of hydrogen ions and um, in solution. You're not going to take the pH of a piece of, of uh, spruce or, or whatever. You, you've got to have some liquid to measure pH. So what do we know about pH? Well, we know a lot of things about pH because some of you pop a tum after you've had some, some you know, digestive malady. Right, Glenn? Oh, yeah. There you go. No problem. So, Tums is an antacid, you know, anti, that you have an acid. So it's designed to lower or to buffer acidity in the stomach. Farmers use lime in the soil to sweeten it. What's, what are they trying to do? Well, they're trying to go from an acidic sediment to more of a neutral sediment so that some of the nutrients that are bound by, by, by that can be freed up. In Casco Bay, over the course of 2001 to 2013, friends of Casco Bay showed at some sentinel sites that there was a trend in pH that was decreasing through time. Decreasing pH means that the water is getting more acidic. Okay? And in fact, they published this in one of their newsletters that their work looked at productive areas of mudflats and unproductive areas of mudflats and found that the pH of unproductive flats was lower than the pH of more productive flats. And the average that they came up with was around 7.5. 7 so remember, 8 is the neutral, 7.5 is more acidic. So let's remember 7.5. And so part of their reporting was to look at the relationship between acidification and clams. And they said that the most pressing problem is the acidification of mudflats and coastal waters and processes that led to reduced stocks of clams, mussels, and other sea life. In fact, the research found this link, a disturbing link between acidic mud and clam flats, where it's no longer profitable for clamors to harbor shellfish. And uh, a board member of the Friends of Casco Bay in the la last newsletter, Althea Bennett McGurr, said that she recalls scooping huge handfuls of clams into eight heavy kettles to steam them for the feast. But now, they have to place the clams into the pot delicately, or else the shells may end up chipped or even shattered. And she says that the, the, the clams they buy now are smaller, and they're more fragile than the ones that she recalls from using from years back. And that those observations of Althea's seem to correspond to the observations that the Friends of Casco Bay have been making about coastal acidification over the years. My question is, is the disturbing link between acidic mud and clam flats where it's no longer profitable for clamors to harvest shellfish, is it real? 
So we have an observation. But if you want to test a potential linkage, you can't take more <coughs> samples. You have to do an experiment or a critical test. And here's our line of thinking in the critical test. I, let, me, let me begin by saying that in a critical test, what you try to do as a scientist is to do everything that you can to go against what you think is really happening. So for example, if I think that predation is more important than coastal acidification, then I want to allow areas that don't have any predator protection as well as areas that have predator protection. Because if I'm getting more clams here than here, then the protection doesn't work. It's not important. But if I get more clams, whoa, I've, I've completely come out of the, the loop here. How does that work? <coughs> mm, don't have a clue here, Angel, what I've done. Um, um, what happened? Our line of reasoning. Thank you. Wow. Very good. So <laughs> Our line of reasoning is now purple. There we go. Walk, walk, walk away. Hey, you did it, buddy. <laughs> so, our line of reasoning goes like this. Let's find some mud flats that have relatively low pH and where there's few juvenile plants. Okay? Then let's attempt to buffer, not with tongues, not with anything else, but let's use some soft shell clams that, that have calcium in it, like tums do, or like lime does. Let's attempt to buffer those flats with crushed soft shell clams. Let's create large scale plots and small scale plots. And let's bury the density of crushed and weathered shells in those plots. Um, let's protect half of them with netting, because I have this paradigm called predation. That's my paradigm, and it's come off of 30 years of, of this kind of stuff. So let's look at the potential results. More clams can be found in plots that have the crushed shell because the shells were buffered, and they buffered that acidic sediment, and it created a habitable environment. So buffering works. That's the first potential result. How about more clams are going to recruit to plots that receive the predator netting rather than the plots that have just the shell because predation is relatively more important. So I call this the predation hypothesis. How about more clams will be found in plots with shells that are netted? Why? Because both buffering and predation is important. And then finally, the same number of clams are found in plots with shell as they are with nets. And that's because both of those things may be important, but neither one of them are more important than the other. That's the suite of potential results. So the question is, really, what's the relative importance of sediment buffering versus predation in regulating soft shell clam recruitment? So here are the six treatments. I've got mud, just by itself, nothing added. Walk away, put a stake at the corner, that's it, leave it alone. Take the same kind of mud, the same area, and put a net over it. Don't put anything underneath of it, just a net. And then let's take two different amounts of shell. Let's take 13 pounds of shell. Where that number came from is immaterial. It actually came from thin air has no more to do with reality than whatever, but 13 pounds. Let's put 13 pounds in a plot, or 26 pounds in a plot. And leave them uncovered, we'll just, just leave the shell there, and then have another series of treatments where we've got 13 pounds, let's cover it with a net. And then let's have another plot that's 26 pounds, and let's cover that with a net. 
So those are the six treatments. And so working with friends at Casco Bay, we asked them to find for us, using their pH meters, sites that have the lowest, or site that had the lowest, this is 2014, lowest pH. And so they did in May of 2014, and we found at Staples Cove, the pH was well below 7.5, it was about 7.1. That's what we're going to do. We're going to set up our study right there. So at Staples Cove, we brought some weathered shell from Beals Island after we had crushed it with our feet in fish totes and spread the shell into 10 foot by 10 foot plots or not, covering some with netting, covering others without. Here's an open plot with just shell. The one before that was a control net plot. Here's a netted plot that has shell under it. And there's the design. So there's five examples or five replicates of each one of those six treatments. So there's 30 plots. And what we did at the end of the day was to go in and take core samples from each one of those plots. But on the way, we also looked at pH and found that, gee, there wasn't any difference in October under the nets versus the open ones in pH. So I don't know really what was going on there, but pH was all over the map. We took core samples under those nets and in the other plots. And for soft shell clams, we found a few more under the netting, but not significantly more. So here's a result that says, didn't make any difference if it was shelled or not. And it also didn't make any difference if it was netted or not. But one of the things is clear. Take a look at the red bar and take a look at the other two bars. The red bar is no shell and the other two bars are with shell. And those bars are not different from each other for either the netted or not. So no effect of shell in terms of enhancing soft shell plants. Well, in that particular instance, we also got cohogs to settle, hard clams. And for cohogs, we found significantly more cohogs in the netted plots, regardless if they were shelled or not. Again, look at the red bar compared to the other two. And then look at how many we found in the unprotected plots, squat. And so netting made a difference, shell didn't. So in addition to the large-scale study, because the large-scale study has this big hole in it logically, and here's the hole. Put out some shell on a mud flat and find out that there's tons of clams that go there and, and, and that are enhanced. Do you say it's because the shell buffered the sediments, or was it the habitat that you created by the shells? So what we wanted to do was to, on a small scale, create a habitat for clams that didn't buffer. Because the shell is a habitat that buffers, we wanted a habitat that didn't buffer. So we came up with a small scale study that had eight treatments, a control, nose netting, control and netting, layer of shell on top, layer of shell and netting, limestone chips, limestone chips and netting, granite chips, granite chips and netting, and here's our design. These are six inch plant pots at the same study site, 2014 and 15, and <coughs> netting produced twice as many clams as no netting, and as you can see, there's no difference from one treatment that's shell versus the control. So there's our small scale results Soft shell clam sizes, I'm going to be going through this real quickly. In 2015, we repeated the large scale study at two sites that both had less than 7.5 pH. And at the end of the day, the pH was actually lower in the netted plots. The netted plots were more acidic than the open plots. The netted plots were more acidic, remember that, at both study sites. 
because in terms of clams, there was 150 times more clams in the plots that were netted. 70. <laughs> at the other side, <laughs> at the other side, there was four times more clams in the netted plots, but no effective shell. The clams were actually smaller in the no netting than the netting. At Little River, the other site, 23 times more clams in netted plots. Oh yeah, we, we continue to do the, the uh, small scale study. What I didn't tell you was, what did we use for that habitat that was unbuffered? We used granite chips. And you can see that the granite chips didn't do anything differently than shell. And the granite chips didn't do anything differently than ambient mud. But what you did see here, in this particular case, was that there wasn't any effective netting. So in those, in those studies, none of those studies showed any effect of shell. And so, one, I have one second left. Yeah. Wait a minute. Okay. okay. pH, 2016. Where do you suppose we set up our 2016 studies? Yes, at the red and the pink, at a place called Little River, a place called Recompense. And these were small scale studies. And so I gave this talk up until right now in, in June in Portland to a, a group of people that know a hell of a lot more about sediment pH than I do. And they said, Brian, you didn't use small enough crushed shell. So I said, good. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take clam shells and ask the folks at DEI to help me crush them up to dime size, to pencil eraser size, and to powder along the building controls. Here's the, here are the treatments. Large shell, medium shell, and small shell, both netted and unnetted. Oh, even found some lime on line. Which I sieved to create one millimeter oyster shell, Crassospia gigas, and also netted that. And there's the unbuffered control that's netted and unnetted. And here is all the work that we did. There's seven and a half pH. This is pH through time at both sites in the open mud. And the netted plots had higher, uh, sorry, lower pH. At one site, the netted plots had lower pH at another. So there's something about netting that reduces pH. But what we found at one site, no difference in netting or in uh, non-netted. But at the other site, oh, and for hard clams, we found the same thing. For recompense, we did find a, a difference, uh, significantly more netted than non-netted. And crushed shell made no difference at all. So. Summary, two studies, large scale 2014 and 15, showed that there really wasn't uh, a disturbing link, that it wasn't real. And the small scale studies supported the results of the large scale studies. They recruited more heavily, most of the time, into netted versus unnetted plots. And so at this time, I think there's no good reason, unfortunately, for towns to spread crushed shell on flats to attempt to enhance clam numbers. And thank you for giving me that two minutes rather than one.